Today, we are going to discuss uh, what is called structural realism. Structural realism. As opposed to classical realism. Structural realism is also called neoliberalism. Neoliberalism. Okay. And uh, the person known for structural realism is uh, Kenneth Wise. Kenneth Wise. Uh, who was an American political scientist. And interestingly, he was also a veteran of World War II and Korean War. So, uh, like, like Thucydides, who was a writer as well as general, Kenneth Waltz, was a writer as well as participant in the war. Uh, so, and the book he wrote became a classic textbook. This came out in 1979, Theory of International Politics. Theory of International Politics by Kenneth Watts. Okay. What did he basically say in this? What are the main assumptions of the structural realism? Uh, structural realism simplified classical realism. It is a much more simplification. Simplification. What kind of simplification is this? Uh, Morgenthau and Thucydides uh, talked about power plus community. But Waltz and other structural realists talked about power only. Power only. And uh, when they were discussing power and community, they discussed the continuity between domestic and international. International. Continuity. But structural realism is about international law. And uh, to posit continuity between domestic and international, classical realists um, based their continuity on human nature, on human nature. His power orientation, human nature, seeks power. But structural realists, they are talking about states. States seek power. And here, for a different reason, compared to this. 
here state is made up of humans and so it is natural to seek power but under structural realism uh, states seek power it is not because they are naturally inclined to power so then why do states seek power so one common point is that states seek power in classical realism and states seek power in structural realism and both are thinking in terms of states okay but then why do states seek power under structural realism why states seek power here there are certain important assumptions kenneth wants proposes the reason why states seek power is the structure of international order the structure of international as opposed to human nature what is the structure his main point for uh state seeking is that there are states and there is nothing above the states to control to settle disputes to maintain order which is called anarchy anarchy here does not mean chaos but it only means there is no hierarchy that is to structural realists to structural realists states are characterized or individuals within a state are subjected to hierarchy individuals within a state the state are subjected to hierarchy but states don't have that hierarchy states have anarchy that is no central order no central order and because there is no central order there are no police to call for help there are no courts um, states try to settle their differences or interests through power and most important reason why states seek power is that 
in anarchy, there is a threat to survival. Threat to survival. And survival can be assured when there is power. So, which means structural rays assume anarchy. So, survival threatened, and so get power. There is nobody to ensure one's safety. This is called self-help world. Self-help world. Okay. One is forced to take care of oneself. A state is forced to take care of itself. Okay. So, State seeks power. Okay. So that is the point. Now, the question is uh, how does this operate? That is now that the state seek power is true. Mm. But then they go into uh, analysis of why they seek more power or uh, under what conditions wars take place Okay, why they seek more power? Why they seek? Under what conditions conflicts take place? Under what conditions security and peace is there? And all these things are explained in terms of states, their power, their uh, position in the world, their position in the world, their position in the world, not with reference to uh, anything like type of government or culture. Uh, or anything like that. So, type of government, culture, these are not considered at all. Or individual leaders, these are not considered. So, let me tell you, when the structuralists say that these are not considered, it does not mean they think they don't influence. It is not like that. No structural realist thinks that these things don't matter, but that a structural realist is arriving at a more useful, a generalizable framework. After all, any theory, be it under classical realism or structural realism, doesn't explain any situation in full. A theory is after all an abstraction. A theory is after all um, removes certain variables for generalization to be possible. So, uh, when structural realists ignore them, 
it doesn't mean they drink that they don't influence but rather that uh, even with these influences there is a pattern regardless of them okay whoever be the president there is a pattern to the nation's behavior whatever be the type of the government there is a pattern so uh, kenneth wars is trying to arrive at um more predictable more scientific a pattern okay uh, but without making any claim that uh, he will be able to predict foreign policy of a country so he said theory of international relations is not the same thing as theory of foreign policy of a country because he knows that a country's foreign policy is subjected to many factors so uh removing these variables kenneth wards is trying to find a pattern which is uh, more generalizable more useful across um many cases so that is the point he is Okay. Okay. Then, okay. Okay. What are those factors? <clears throat> The factors are related to structure. for example in the world uh, how many poles are there unipolar world bipolar world multipolar world this is one aspect of structure okay wars thinks that bipolar is source of security world during cold war is bipolar Cold War, Cold War had one of the longest peace. Okay. One more thing uh, that both classical realists and the structural realists do is that uh, they are trying to arrive at a theory based on certain world events, events to theorizing. so they quote certain events and then you know these events are subjected to multiple interpretations uh, but in to wards bipolar is the best why not multipolar in a multipolar say there are three poles uh if there are three poles if there are uh three poles what happens is that you have uh three diodes one diode one the do this thing one two three. okay this three so more poles mean uh, more possibility of conflict okay but here some people may not agree so there would be differences in terms of which is better bipolar or multipolar and even regarding unipolarity there can be differences because it is unipolar uh which means there is no one to contest there cannot be anything like central war really discuss in terms of central war central war is an important war where world is impacted okay uh, world war 1 is a central war world war 2 is a central war uh, 
So in a unipolar world, there is no central war. That is a positive thing. But some people think in a unipolar world, because uh, this particular pole is not questioned, it can go and uh, harm others in trying to become much more powerful. Okay. For example, like USD to Iraq uh, and also to Afghanistan. So essentially, um, people can differ in terms of uh, what is the impact of number of poles. So structural realists don't have a consensus that uh, this is the better word, but it is just that structuralism, structural realism is about thinking of war and peace in terms of structure. Okay. And now, second point is, it is not the number not number alone, but share of power. Share of power. For example, when a country is unipolar, how much powerful it is vis-a-vis um, -vis the second power. So, for example, unipolar world, this is also unipolar world. These are the unipolar world. But this unipolarity uh, means that it is a preponderant power. Second power is too small. Whereas in this case, second power is somewhat. And of course, even if it is like this also, it is unipolarity. Okay. So, uh, structurally realist Pay attention to <coughs> not only number of powers, but also how power is distributed. For example, in the case of multipolarity, multipolarity um, can be like this, or it, or it can be. like this, all kinds of possibilities exist. So that is how much power does each country have? So dynamics across countries is affected by their share of world power. So that is one. And next, thing is um, the change change for example the change can be source of conflict uh, one power is second this is called ruling power ruling power US is ruling power now, but something is emerging like China. This is called aspiring power, aspiring power or emerging power. This is the challenge. Ruling power wants to maintain the status quo. Emerging powers want to challenge the status quo. If this is called a status quo state, aspiring power or emerging power is called revisionist state. Revisionist state. So when a revisionist state wants to revise the political system, power distribution, then ruling power won't accept it. Is a case of US and China. So structural realists look at what were the challenges faced to 
UK, what were the challenges faced to other countries and uh, what happened. So that means change in the power distribution can be a source of conflict because it leads to conflict between status quo states and uh, revisionist states. That is one. The next thing is um, this has to do with military technology. Military technology. Uh, military technology impacts what is called offense defense balance. Offense defense balance. Okay. Uh, how does this happen? For example, some technologies are offense favorable. When it is offense favorable, then countries may want to go for offense. Some kind of technologies, for example, during uh, before World War, sorry, before World War One, were offense favorable, and some technologies were defense favorable. For example, nuclear technology. It's hugely defense favorable. If, if a country has nuclear weapons. They're very good sources of defense, but they're not good for offense. One doesn't want to use a nuclear weapon against another country um, because uh, it leads to huge damage. So, um, if the technology is favorable to defense, then it is likely to lead to peace during Cold War nuclear weapons meant mutually assured destruction. So it led to peace. But if the technology is favorable to offense, then countries may want to go for war and uh, uh, be more powerful than others. So uh, these are the ways by which uh, structural realists think in terms of what states do to enhance their power and uh, under what circumstances they are likely to go for war under what circumstances they are not likely. Okay. Mm. Within this structural realism there are two uh, major divisions. One is offensive realism and defensive realism. Offensive realism and defensive realism. Uh, Kenneth Wards belongs to defensive realism. Uh, the position of Kenneth Wards defensive realism is that he says a state doesn't want to maximize power. He doesn't, he doesn't want to maximize power. It may want to go to a particular state. It may want to go to this and it may not want to go to this point, though it is capable. So A to B, A to B it wants, B to C no. Wallace thinks that if a state tries to be too powerful, then other states will form a coalition and uh, uh, harm a state who wants to assume much more power. For example, Imperial Germany, okay, during war one, 
uh, it wanted to acquire so much power others are undefeated nazi germany others form a coalition and defeated okay or um, napoleon's france also faced the same problems so wants things country doesn't want to be hegemon doesn't want to be a hegemon it wants to acquire enough power so that its security is not threatened because after all state is interested in surviving so wars belongs to this school but offensive realists don't think so offensive realists think if some power is good if some power is good then more power is better okay if some power is good more power is better and a state wants to be in the end a hegemon that is to create a unipolar world so offensive realists think that there is no limit for state search for power unlike walls a defensive realist who thinks that uh, it is not the state doesn't want state won't like to be a hegemon the offensive realists argue that uh, uh, a state failing to be a hegemon is not the same thing as state not trying to be a hegemon napoleon france may have failed that imperial germany may have failed nazi germany may have failed but that they tried to become so states want to acquire as much power as possible but they may fail when they don't uh, rightly estimate their power so uh, this is one major division between uh, the among realists within the structural realists okay. so this is what uh, structural realism is thank you